from Global, leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you, Donald, and good evening, everybody. Well, if you bought the Sunday newspapers yesterday, you could hardly have failed to miss the story about the founder of Leave.eu and, indeed, his head of communications, Andy Wigmore. Banks and Wigmore accused of having serial meetings with the Russians, in fact, being tools of the Kremlin, um, and some say perhaps possibly even agents for the Kremlin. Accusations have been rife now for 18 months, that the Soviets, uh, the, the modern Soviets, interve- intervene heavily in the Brexit campaign, maybe even funded the Brexit campaign. A lot of things have been said under parliamentary privilege uh, by many MPs with all sorts of accusations and even try to drag me into the middle of all of this. Uh, and I thought, well, given that tomorrow there is going to be a meeting chaired by Damien Collins MP, the Department of Culture, Media and Sport, and that... Aaron Banks and Andy Wigmore are going to appear tomorrow, and they've pretty much kept their silence since those newspapers yesterday, but their first interview is here with me on LBC, and we're going to try and get to the bottom um, of page after... You may have read it yesterday. There are gold mines involved, former generals in the British Army, and it was always a bit bit like a James Bond thriller, but the accusations were there and they were very, very clear. So, good evening, Aaron good Banks, evening. Annie Wigmore. Nigel. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to start with you, Aaron. Um, so, the story is that you met the Russian ambassador yeah. back in 2015 and had what you described as a boozy lunch. Mm. What qualifies as a boozy lunch? Well, we had about, uh, I think, th- four shots of Stalin vodka, brandy, wine... We were pretty trolled. Right, I think the ambassador so was probably in a worse state than we were, frankly. But why were you there? What was he after? Well, I'll tell you what happened. We were at the UKIP conference in Doncaster, and we were approached by a Russian uh, observer, and he said, would you like lunch with the Russian ambassador? So we said, of course. OK, and... Uh, you got to remember, this was before the witch hunt started. Oh, so yes. So it was before all of the kind of, you know, dramatic, you know... Certainly Russia was Russia's. not... A, the, the, there were not the accusations yeah. against Putin's regime that That's there right. are today. But one meeting, and then the Sunday Times yesterday says that actually there were three meetings, yep. and, and commentators say, well, Aaron Banks wrote a book yep. called The Bad Boys of Brexit. He talked about the boozy lunch but didn't mention the other meetings. Why? Well, it's a strange sort of conspiracy when you write about it in your own book, isn't it? I mean, if you were trying to keep a, some sort of James Bond conspiracy with a Russian secret... Well, you read about one lunch, book, yes. But, of course, the book's timeline finishes uh, with us in Mississippi. You might remember you did a, you know, big... Uh, I do. ...big speech to the Republican, uh, you know, uh, rally there. And eventually, if you remember, the book finishes at that point. So, actually... You know, the, the second meeting with the Russian ambassador was after that, and it was after our meeting with Donald Trump. So how many meetings in total with the Russian ambassador were there? There were two lunches and one cup of tea where I was introduced to the businessman with the uh, project to consolidate the Russian gold mines. OK, so so the embassy kept in touch with you yeah, and were keen to see you again, yeah. and there was the proposal of a, a gold mine, a Siberian so, gold mine yeah. deal, uh, which people might say to themselves, well, um, was Aaron Banks not using the Brexit campaign to try and further his business interests? Well, not really. I mean, we, we went there uh, to have this lunch with the Russian ambassador. That, you know, we had it after Trump. He was interested in the election of Trump. When we'd had the original meeting relating to Brexit, he was fascinated by, you know, the Brexit campaign. In fact, he thought that it wasn't going to happen. His advice, you know, what he said was, I don't think Brexit's happening. So after brexit yep and after trump yep. you have the second lunch yep. the book doesn't mention it because the no. book finishes before Correct. i understand that completely no, I do not but three it. days three days after yep. we met president or president elect yep. trump as he was yep. you met the russian ambassador yep. and people would say well uh, were you reporting back well not really we had had a very pleasant lunch with him that lasted six hours and of course he saw a picture of us on the golden yep. you know, doors of trump's apartment and of course he got in touch with Andy because he had seen us splashed all over the newspaper. so are you surprised when the various journalists the guardian and mm. elsewhere say well actually isn't it clear that what banks and wigmore were doing was reporting back directly to the russians on the meeting that took place with president trump well it's complete nonsense 
Is it? I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, we had two lunches and a cup of tea. Um, yeah. But he must have asked you about President Trump, uh, well, at the tr- his at, demeanour. At, at, the, at the lunch, he was uh, interested in Trump for the same reasons that he didn't, you know, couldn't believe Trump had been elected. And this is part of the Sunday Times story that we were we were asked for, you know, numbers of the transition team. The Sunday Times contact, said that, you, that you'd admitted yep. to giving telephone numbers of the transition team yep. to the Russian Correct. administration. Yes. Uh, Hang on. On. Why would you? Right. Uh, so uh, you, need to put some, you need to put some context onto this. Um, if you remember, which you do, when we actually went to Trump Tower, it wasn't a planned event and it wasn't a planned um, visit. We went there to meet some people that we've got to know during the campaign. Uh, what then happened? There was a huge demonstration, which of about forty thousand people coming down Fifth Avenue. We were in the building. The Secret Service locked it down. We were stuck in Kellyanne Conway's office for five hours. So during that period of time, uh, we got talking, I got talking to a girl who was on a transition desk or a desk, and she said to me, you're British, you might be able to help me. And she said, do you have a number for number 10 Downing Street? They've called and we don't have any contact with the British government. Can you help me? So I did have a number for number 10 and I gave it to her. She then asked for a number of other embassies who they didn't have any numbers for. And why? Because there'd be no preparation by any of these foreign governments thinking that Trump would be elected. So that's a fair point. So I then asked her, I said, what if someone wants to get in touch with you? And she says, here's a number. You can give that to them. And I took that number. Two days later, I was actually at Buckingham Palace. As my role as a diplomat for a country, my country Belize, I go to these events and I met many ambassadors and high commissioners who had seen my picture on the front of a newspaper. They asked me exactly the same question. How do we get in touch with the transition team? Why? Because none of them had done any preparatory work to try and meet or liaise with this new presidential team. So naturally, when we're in front of um, the Russian ambassador, he had said exactly the same thing. We did not expect Trump to win. He was very clear about that. And do you have... A well, no- nobody did, did they? No. Do you know a way that we can get in contact with <clears> him? Do you have a number? He asked that. So is said- the telephone, are the telephone number or numbers mm-hmm. that were given to... And you say mm-hmm. many people asked for them. You were yeah. a dip- serving diplomat at the time. Yeah. Was it one phone number? It's one phone number. For the, or was it numbers of individuals no, who were members of the transition? Number. One just phone, one phone just number. Just one phone number. OK. And I handed that um, to him and I said, yes. This is a number, and I told him how I'd got that number. This was the girl sitting on a desk, a part of the transition team. So he took that away. He was grateful. Thank you very much. Can I pass that back? I said, well, yes. Andy, you're going to be there tomorrow in front of yes. this committee with Aaron, and, you know, it's scheduled to last for three hours, although I believe that <laughs> they've applied for an extension, so goodness knows how long so this, bit, bit this will go on. a bit less lunch with the Russian ambassador. Well, well less than, <laughs> that's, that's a very good we, point. We have stamina. We'll be fine. <laughs> but, Andy, you were very much involved yes. as the communications director, mm-hmm. very much involved in the planning of the campaign, and I know that... Aaron put a lot of money into this campaign, but other people too yes. put money into the Leave.eu campaign. Was there at any point Russian or Russian individuals or Russian businesses that gave money to Leave.eu? No, not one penny or ruble. Not, not one. And Aaron the <laughs> no, same? Absolutely. Because that is the main shot. I mean, yeah. the, the main allegation. Yeah is that somehow but Brexit you, was funded by the Russians. you've got to see the genesis of where this all came from. That's there was a report yeah. written in America that was, uh, you know, that we actually challenged. It went on to CNN. It crossed over to the, the you know, the ocean. The A, a couple of me- members of Parliament repeated this allegation with, you know, parliamentary privilege. And this whole fake n- news narrative started to roll, you know, from it. But you've got to see in the context that there hadn't been a Russian witch hunt. It wasn't even mentioned. It was only when Trump won that there had to be a reason why he had won and Brexit had but been But people say happened. there's no smoke without fire, and that's well, I, what well, they say. Well, and, 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 course, well, and, and, and your Nigel, situation, Nigel, Aaron, Nigel. Is, I mean, you're even married to a Russian. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> Well, I would say the Sunday Times article was four pages of smoke from a single match. It was uh, ludicrous. OK, so tomorrow, yes. and, you know, you've explained to me, you've, yeah. you've talked about the meetings, and, and I wonder why you didn't disclose those extra meetings, did you? Well, no, I'm not a member of Parliament. I don't have a conflict of interest. Or a register of interest. I, register of interest. I, I've met many people. Hmm. I mean, even with Andy, we've, we've met most of the Caribbean. In fact, I think we had a dinner where we hosted the... You know, most of the high commissioners from the Caribbean to talk about Brexit. We did indeed. A whole yeah. range of people. So the focusing on Russia, because it's convenient 
politically. This is a witch hunt. Well, it seems to be put quite convenient tonight for none other than Theresa May who is backing calls that are coming from quite a lot of members of parliament. Um, basically, she's supporting the line that there should be a full police inquiry yeah. uh, into reports uh, that you, Aaron, and you, Andy, had extensive contacts with the Kremlin. Well, what is the crime? You know, I'd like to know what the police are going to investigate. Lunch with the Russian ambassador? What are they going to investigate? So the police knock on your door and want to interview you. Well, I shall tell them exactly what happened, but I, mm. you know, where, where Mind is you, the, we're going to tell the, Damien Collins exactly yeah. what happened. But where as well? is the evidence yeah. that we, right. we we took Russian money? There's no evidence. So tomorrow, yeah. you 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 appearing before this committee. Mm. You don't have to appear. No. You you you, know, you you've accepted their invitation to go and do this. Um, Aaron, you're going to face a lot of members of Parliament, uh, many of whom are convinced that you're a bit dodgy, yeah. a bit shady. Uh, that something a bit unpleasant, a bit seedy about yeah. this relationship yeah. with, you know, Russian mining billionaires and ambassadors. Yeah. And, and, and I'm guessing you're in for a pretty tough time of it tomorrow. I don't know. They might be in for a tough time of it. Really? Well, I, I read today that Damien Collins actually took a, do you know, had to disclose a donation from uh, Roman Abramovich for corporate hospitality at Chelsea Football Club. His so, you know, rice. frankly, <laughs> given that Abramovich is ma was Putin's man in, 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 you know, London, what the heck is the chairman of the committee that's meant to be investigating Russian, you know, collusion influence doing taking corporate hospitality with, with okay. you know, billionaire Russian? OK, well, <laughs> it just goes to show... I'm sure, he had a, I'm sure he had a brilliant lunch as well. The Lots of, us, <laughs> lots of us go to meetings, and yeah. some go well, and some go badly. And as communications director, Andy, do you regret getting involved with the Russian ambassador at all? No. You don't? No. I mean, it, part of my job, it just, if you, could, if you looked in hindsight, would I do it again? If I had the knowledge that there was going to be some kind of witch hunt and hysteria about the Russians, yeah. I probably would have thought twice. But now... You know, I can look back on it and think, well, there was a purpose. It was nothing to do really with Brexit. It was just part of the natural wow. uh, uh, progress of meeting people. I didn't think I mean, anything actually, Philip, I mentioned the, the, you know, the, the ambassador did mention the day before he had lunch with Philip Hammond. Yes. It was very congenial and that they had a lovely time. To so, talk, to talk about know. Brexit. So if Philip right. Hammond's allowed to do it... The, but how are, you going to convince, how are you going to convince people that you weren't actually, were, maybe inadvertently, but you weren't actually passing information about the Brexit campaign or indeed the Trump campaign or Trump's intentions to the Russian authorities. Well, we didn't have any information about the Trump campaign, so how could we pass it on? It what was an observation, if anything. That, and, but it, you talk about our campaign. We weren't the ap approved Leave campaign. People sometimes seem to forget that in all of this. We were very much the provisional wing. We were operating very much with you, as you know. Yeah, no, I know. That. And we weren't. We what we did was uh, attack areas and go into areas of the country and subjects which the the vote leave campaign didn't want to touch. So that is what we did as a campaign. Now, how we can pass that on and influence Russia and Ru Russia influence that is beyond me. But are you a person of interest to the CIA, Andy? Well, I thought you were a person of interest to the FBI, Nigel. Well, <laughs> you know, a lot of things have been said about all of us that have been well, involved with the Brexit okay, campaign so, so one or, of the things, or, or the Trump campaign. So, Nigel, what are we going to do tomorrow? Well, you're going to get, I mean, yeah. you will be accused to tomorrow yeah. of acting wittingly or yeah. unwittingly okay, so this as, is what, as, this is as what agents. We're going to do. This is what we're going to do. We're going to submit to the committee a series of meetings that we had with the United States and we became very aware and very sensitive particularly after Trump won and particularly after this Atlantic Council um, allegations came out that our new friends we could potentially embarrass so we actually got some guidance of a former uh, head of David Cameron's um, chief of staff who advised us it would be a good idea we spoke to the government of Mississippi who advised us it would be a good idea to speak to the Americans and let them know exactly what's gone on so there was nothing to hide so I had a series of meetings with a very senior official at the American Embassy here not once not twice but a dozen times and in fact I briefed him on everything that had been going on everything that had been we'd been accused of and why did I do that so they would know exactly what was going on if they needed to speak to various authorities they could at least they had the information with them I've got all the emails here I will be submitting them with Aaron to Damien Collins so you can see them there is also a meeting which we arranged which you will know with one of the bigger bosses of the American Embassy uh, security services yep. and he met you 
did he not? Yeah, no, I do remember meeting, you know, the big boss man from, from the American but, embassy, you know, no, and I was happy to talk yeah. to him about all of this, Nigel although Ma I'd not met the Russian yeah. ambassador. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, indeed, yeah. to put that into context. Fr frankly, we will be putting in front of the committee tomorrow the, the email evidence that we met the... Uh, the CIA or the senior people in the embassy connected to the many times section many times and let's hope that Damien yeah. Collins doesn't leak the information like he's done everything else today. well that's quite because, a, that, that's because, quite a thought but I mean but, well, you know that, because, that, that'll be for you to battle because, out with him because tomorrow fr because fr frankly Nigel it's got the details of you know CIA and all sorts of different people and if he wants to continue to leak the way he's done he can was there can do you think Aaron your case aside and yeah. I, I've asked you both about Russian money yeah contacts, meetings, uh, uh, was there beyond you, yeah. do you think there was Russian collusion either in the Brexit campaign or in the Trump campaign? I think it's possible at a low level when we talked about these bots and these kind of, you know, the things that the Russians are trying to do, but at a very sort of amateur level. I mean, I really think that the reason this is all coming out is because it's a concerted Remain campaign to kind of smear anyone involved in the Brexit campaign. We saw Jacob Rees-Mogg, didn't we, splashed over the front page of whichever newspaper it was saying, you know, Russian connections, mm. tenuously because he runs a hedge fund that might have investments in Russia. No, it's, it, it, it's a concerted campaign to basically attack anyone involved with Brexit. Now, what I would say to Dam Damon Collins is, why have you called no witnesses from the Remain campaign and interrogated them? Why are all of the witnesses, you know, useful for you? Yeah. So tomorrow, 10.30. Yeah, sharp. You're there before that committee. Can we expect fireworks? Yes, we certainly can. Well, it's a busy day, isn't it? Overnight, we've got the President of the USA meeting Kim Jong-un. We've got Aaron Banks and Andy <laughs> Wigmore appearing before the De Department of Culture, Media and Sport <laughs> Committee. And tomorrow night, crucial votes in the House of Commons. You've listened to what the two gentlemen have had to say. Do you believe them? Do you think there was Russian collusion during the Brexit campaign, or is it just a load of old nonsense? You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show. It's exclusively here on LBC, and the time is now 7.22. Well, you've just listened to Aaron Banks and Andy Wigmore from Leave.eu, who've been accused of all sorts of things in yesterday's newspapers and face a parliamentary committee tomorrow morning on did they collude with the Russians? Did it influence the Brexit vote? Let me know what you think. If you think, yeah, it probably did influence the vote, then call me on 0345 973 or if you think, don't insult me, nobody, by sending me an email, is going to influence my vote, then text to 84850. Or maybe you have got more, think more questions should be answered, in which case tweet, using the hashtag Farage and LBC, at LBC, and watch us on Facebook and comment there too. Well, the political fallout from those Sunday papers yesterday has reached even the Prime Minister today. Uh, to get a view on this, I'm going to go to Theo Usherwood, LBC's political editor. Theo, good evening. Uh, good evening, Nigel. Yes, an interesting, a fascinating uh, interview with Aaron Banks and Andy uh, Wigmore. I just picked out uh, a few of the uh, top lines uh, from that interview. Yeah. That lunch with the Russian ambassador lasting six hours, four Stalin vodka shots, uh, wine and brandy. The hangover must have been uh, pretty monumental. Uh, well, I think in some, way, in, some ways, Theo, in some ways, Theo, with the press coverage, they're still suffering from it, aren't they? <laughs> Absolutely. But, but on to the substantive points, um, an interesting line, Kellyanne Conway, uh, Andy Wigmore, saying that they were stuck in uh, her office for uh, five hours while Trump Tower was in lockdown uh, during that meeting with the photograph outside the lift. Of course, you were there. And that she asked for a number for 10 Downing Street. Um, and of course, back, uh, back at the time, there was uh, a fear within uh, Whitehall that you could... Uh, you, Nigel, could find yourself with some sort of uh, ambassadorship um, to uh, the Trump campaign, and that, uh, in actual that fact, that I mean that that allegation stands up that line that um, the Trump were looking for a way into uh, Westminster, a way into uh, the Theresa May's uh, operation, and that she that she had to go to Andy Wigmore of all, uh, Ke Trump, Kellyanne Conway had to mm. go to Andy Wigmore of all people uh, in order uh, to get it. And then, 
On those allegations that somehow there was Russian influence, Kremlin influence uh, over the Leave.EU campaign, and this is this is the key bit. You asked whether uh, either men had accepted any money, uh, Russian money, through companies or through uh, the government itself, state money itself, and both of them denied that they had accepted any any uh, well, one penny or one uh, ruble, describing the reports in the Sunday Times uh, as uh, four pages of smoke from a single uh, match. And then a taster, of course, for that uh, hearing in front of the Digital Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee tomorrow, uh, when uh, Aaron Banks said that they would be, uh, both men would be submitting email evidence uh, of contact with uh, an officer from uh, the Central Intelligence Agency uh, and then there was a, uh, a swipe at uh, Damien Collins, the yeah. chairman of that committee, that he might leak it. Well, we can expect fireworks, as both men said. Yep, I think so. Theo, busy day in Parliament um, all round tomorrow. We'll talk, we'll talk tomorrow evening. And, of course, you know, they also mentioned the fact that Damien Collins received an invitation from Abramovich. Uh, well, what it was, it was actually from Chelsea Football Club, which is owned, of course, by Roman Abramovich. But I've no doubt uh, that is all going to come up tomorrow. I think, you know, I know Banks, Aaron Banks very, very well, um, and Andy Wigmore. Uh, they're not politicians. They are... Uh, people from the world of business, insurance mostly, but of mining too. Um, and I don't think they're going to pull their punches tomorrow. I think it could be very, very interesting viewing. OK, well, on them, the conversation we've just had, the prospect of the meeting tomorrow, but more broadly, more broadly, Russian collusion. Tell me, do you think Russian collusion influenced the Brexit vote? I certainly don't. In fact, there was more Russian bot activity supporting Jeremy Corbyn in the last general election than was ever involved in the Brexit campaign. It's for the birds, in my opinion. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusive in LBC. It is now 7.30. As Prime Minister May joins calls for a police investigation into Aaron Banks and Andy Wigmore's Leave.EU campaign because they had meetings with the Russian ambassador, I'm asking you whether you suspect Russian collusion influenced the Brexit Exit vote. I think it's nonsense, but hey, what do you think? Julian, a new caller from Fulham. Good evening, Julian. Hello, good evening, Nigel. Welcome to the show. What do you think? Thank you. Uh, well, as I said to uh, your colleague, I, I feel rather disillusioned about the whole thing. I, I voted um, for Brexit as part of a patriotic, what I saw as a patriotic duty. And uh, now that I've read some of these terrible stories about you know, this possible link to Russia. It really has made me question things. Well, Julian, I would say to you that means that the Remainers, or the Romaniacs, those that want us to stay in the European Union, those of us that want a second referendum, if you're becoming disillusioned because of what you're reading, they're winning. They're doing their job rather well. And I say that, Julian, because they haven't produced a shred of evidence of any wrongdoing. Well, not yet, but it is all a bit murky. I mean, you've got to admit, uh, the person who broke the story was Isabel Oakeshott, yep. who's actually paid by um, Aaron Banks, is in the employ of Aaron Banks, and she only went public uh, when the Observer was threatening to, to break it. But, I mean, the whole thing just, as I say, it just stinks to me. And it, it, it's kind of farcical that you are interviewing these two guys when, you know, you also have questions. Oh, do you, know, do you know, Julian, About I have why, watched... I, were you at the Julian, I have watched for years BBC interviewers interview people that they're godparents to, that they went to the same school as, and with whom they share the same political opinions. And, and, and Julian, I know, if you want to criticise me, you can, but I think I did ask fair and reasonable questions. And the Trump campaign, it's all linked in, I don't... Just answer the question, what were you doing meeting Julian Assange? LBC organised the meeting for me. And what was it regarding? Well, how many times, Julian, have I gone through this? I mean, I, I don't know whether you're a regular listener to this show, but regulars were going, oh, my God, not again. Um, I, I, I went because LBC organised a meeting. It was a view to doing an interview with Assange. who had not done a big interview in this country for a very, very long time. But this is, this is, this is the problem. Everything is, is linked up. You've got the... The, the whole world's linked up, Julian. We're, 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 all, yes. we're, we're all a couple yes. of contacts away from each other. Of course we yes. are. So Julian, Julian you, you, you're, you're getting worried 
about what you've read. Have you seen a shred of evidence that there was any genuine Russian collusion in the Brexit campaign? Well, I, I don't know. We need to follow the money, don't we? We need to find out how Leave EU was funded. And there are question marks regarding that. Who's asking those questions? Well, hopefully the uh, Select Committee tomorrow. Well, do you know what, Julian? <laughs> they will. They will. I'm sure they will. And uh, maybe a lot will be revealed tomorrow. I have to say, for, I, I know uh, Aaron Banks put a lot of money into Leave.eu. There's one other big businessman put a lot of money into Leave.eu. And a lot of small, ordinary folk put in their 10 quids and their 50 quids. Um, uh, I, I asked them explicitly whether any money was taken from anybody or any company with Russian links or influence, and they definitively said no. Julian, I'm sorry you're feeling disillusioned. The press are working. What does Jason make of it all in Sutton? Hi, good evening, Nigel. Good evening. Um, so I think this is one of those times when Shakespeare trumps the Bible. Shakespeare wrote in, I think it was Merchant of Venice, the truth will, no, it was the Bible, that said the truth will set you free, and Shakespeare said the truth will out. Um, the truth will certainly come out, there's no two ways about it. Um, but whether or not it'll set these guys free, I think it's more likely to convict them when it all comes out at the end of the day. So he set them free, are they, I mean, are you suggesting that they should sort of be sort of on bail at the moment, Jason? I mean, just because, just because a bunch of MPs who are fanatical about Remain make a series of unsubstantiated allegations means nothing, Jason, in a, in, a, in a free and fair society. Or do you think, or do you think, Jason, are you one of those Remainers who thinks that any accusation is fair game? Oh, my goodness. Did you just say unsubstantiated statements? What, do you mean like 40 million Romanians coming to live in my basement and next door to me? Do you mean like... Did you see the... By the way, Jason, people? I tell you, you what, okay. All right, I tell you what. Okay, you Jason, I told the country I feared up to quarter of a million Romanians would come to this country in the first five years. Jason, I apologise to you. I got it hopelessly, I got it hopelessly wrong. The official figures out two weeks ago said there were 411,000. I underestimated Jason, and I'm really sorry for that. But, I, but, but, but this debate, this, this debate, Jason, is do you, do you, Jason from Sutton, and clearly you're very, very, very pro-Remain, um, do you, Jason in Sutton, believe that there was Russian collusion in Jeremy Corbyn's election campaign last year? Ooh, now there's a good question. I have no idea. I've not seen okay, any of that. Okay, fine. But what we do fine. Know and, do, and let me ask you the well, second question. Question. question: Do you believe okay. there was Russian? Do you believe there was Russian collusion in the Brexit campaign? I have absolutely no doubt. We know that. No already. doubt. But in St. Petersburg, there was a troll factory set up, and these people were paid by the state. This is fact. It's all available. <laughs> yes, Jason, up. Jason, it's Jason. Understand. And they spent more resource, far more resource, on Jeremy Corbyn and trying to get him elected than they did on the Brexit campaign. And do you know what they were doing, these people? They were, pl they were planting stories that were retweeted by people like you and the Leave.eu campaign. Mm. Uh, can, can you tell me anything that you said that was true and accurate? When do you know, do you know Jason, George Soros's lot, you? George Soros's lot were doing the same on the other oh, side. Di oh, diversion tactics, diversion tactics. You can't answer a straight question. So, so, uh, so an American billionaire, an American billionaire, who is, of course, currently funding the campaign to get a second referendum, him doing it's fine, but people from other no, countries no, no, no. doing it's wrong. Wrong. Is is that right? Didn't your Mr. Wigwall say tonight that while he was director of communications for the Leave.eu campaign, he was actually a diplomat for my country, he said, which was Belize. Yep. So he's not even here. Is he paying taxes here? Is he a British citizen? Who knows? He's a diplomat for what's a for effectively a foreign country. Well, it is part of the Commonwealth, Jason, and they're our real friends. Or do you not think that? So Nigeria's Wait, wait. He, There's a great big exciting world out there, Jason. There's a great big exciting world out there. Maybe, Jason, maybe, Jason, the fact that he was a diplomat for Belize explains why he meets, so, or he met, so many other ambassadors. Possible? Doesn't explain why UKIP and your cronies have been with the Russian ambassadors at their at their embassy and their homes and parties since 2012, does it? I've you never, you know, Jason. I'm sorry, mate. I mean, I, I know this is all great fun, but I've never ever been to the Russian embassy. Your cronies. Your, are you telling me that no senior representatives, no leadership of uh, UKIP, ever had hasn't had involvement with the 
Russians since 2012, since the Euro elections? Really? Well, I was the leader of it. I, I, was, I was the leader of it, Jason, for most of that time. And the answer is a okay. big no. And I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm going to have to move on. Phil is a new caller from Finchley. Good evening, Phil. Oh, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. I just wanted to say that uh, I've been listening to the discussion and I think yeah. historically, I think you've got to be rational about it. I think, would you agree that the... Um, that, that the uh, the Russians would uh, Putin in particular would uh, be more than happy to see Europe weakened, we uh, divided Europe, a fragmented Europe makes Putin and Russia stronger. Would you at least agree with? Well, that? a weaker a, a weaker America. Would you agree that, would you a, agree a that weaker America Putin Phil makes Putin potentially stronger. No, no, a weaker no, China question, potentially no, makes Putin no, stronger. No, but but the question for you is: Do you agree that uh, Putin and the Russian government, the oligarchs and the rest, would want a divided Europe? If they do. Clearly, they would, whether they sponsored it and there was collusion in the sense of money or whatever well, else. Uh, I think, Phil, the truth is, of it is... Would you agree with that or not? I think the truth of it is... Explanation? I think, Phil, the truth of it is that, that Putin's Russia sees the European Union as a threat. And the reason yes. is, that, and the reason is very clear, that the European Union is very keen on continued eastward expansion and they see that as a threat particularly as the eu now wants to militarize so putin has no love for this european union that is certainly true phil but, but would you also agree would you also agree that putin has an issue with the european union in the sense of its power in the sense of the european union trying to promote key, key components of democracy key components of the rule of law it's, and the other areas which you are totally at odds with Putin. the so issue is it Europe, phil the issue is expansionism the issue is expansionism Russia. and of course he is but 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 phil so if that's now if you give me that point then clearly you can actually argue that there is potential for the russians to see an opportunity in, and we only got to look at history we've been doing it around the world oh. we've been doing it around the world and if they take the opportunity of weakening europe at any opportunity, well isn't this the funny thing isn't this the funny thing that actually the truth of it is Nigel, the truth of it is we've all been interfering in, in, other, in other people's elections Absolutely. all over the world for, the for, I got for you centuries. Is, doing Putin, you see, the difference between you and I is I actually did vote Remain, but I did not vote to leave the common market. I voted to leave the European Union. I did not oh. vote to leave the common market. Oh, now, so, I'm, Phil, when you voted, I'm, I'm, I'm when you voted, Phil, were you, were you unaware when you voted that leaving the European Union with a leave vote also meant leaving the, the single market and customs union? No, because I thought it was strength in our hand. I thought the Europeans wouldn't allow us to do it. I thought uh, Cameron was a complete waste of space. I think that if we threaten to leave the negotiating table, take a Trumpist approach, walk away, they come crawling back. I thought it would reinforce our position and strengthen our arm. Instead of that, we've got people running around setting fire to the house. I do not want to leave the common market. My... The, the people I work well, with... Well, it's not a common market, but it's a single market, isn't no, it? but I want, I want a common market. Margaret Thatcher introduced a single market. And I then, want a and then regretted it to her dying to day. ...within the customs union. Phil, the, the point is... is sure, Phil, we, we are deviating here, but i just just, just make yeah, this one point very, very, very quickly to you. Every single leading player who spoke for the Leave side and the Remain side said the consequence of a Leave vote would mean leaving the European single market. Well, not as far as where I'm coming from. Because All right, people fine. No, I feel I can't. Can I, can I, can I, I can't argue with you. I had this yesterday. Go to lbc.co.uk. See the quotes that were given by the leading players on both sides in the campaign. It could not have been clearer. You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show, exclusively in LBC. It's 7.46. There are big votes in Westminster tomorrow night and on Wednesday night. These are the amendments the House of Lords have sent back part of the government's European Union withdrawal bill. They are crucial. They are key. They're important. The Prime Minister's position he could even rest on the result. So, of course, it's no surprise the timing of all of this, is it? That's why the Sunday papers were full of it all yesterday. That's why we're reaching almost hysterical fever pitch in Westminster with accusations that the Leave side were funded by the Russians, that we colluded with the Russians. I think it's nonsense. Some of you are genuinely Worried about it. Meanwhile, in Singapore, that little country, which, by the way, when it broke away from Malaysia, people said it was too small, it wouldn't be able to cope on its own, and it's become per capita just about the richest country in the world, and in many ways, one of the most influential. The White House have said tonight, the plan is, Mr Trump and Mr Kim will meet, their initial greetings will happen at one o'clock in the morning, our time. There'll then be a one-on-one -on -one meeting between the two, at which nobody else will be in the room. Nobody else will be in the room. It will be just, just 
the President, uh, Trump, uh, Kim, and two interpreters. They will meet. There will be no minutes taken of that meeting, which international diplomats say is a total disgrace, but hey, Trump doesn't do things conventionally. Then there will be expanded meetings with other representatives, followed by a working lunch. Beyond that, we know nothing. Trump has said he will no doubt form his, his initial opinion of Mr Kim and whether he can trust him pretty quickly. He said in fact, it might take as much as a minute for him to decide. And is Trump tomorrow going to storm out dramatically saying it's all a waste of time or is it going to be a success? Is there going to be some progress? I would suggest, ladies and gentlemen, whatever your opinion of Donald Trump, and I know from all the phone-ins we do that he does elicit very strong views on both sides. I think just for once, shall we wish the both of them the very best for this meeting? Because, you know, at the end of it, the winner won't be Trump, it won't be Kim, it'll be the world. So I've got my fingers very firmly crossed. Back to, did the Russians collude? Is it all nonsense? John is calling from Derby. Good evening, John. Hi, Nigel. Thanks for taking my call. Not a bit. Um... Yeah, just uh, before I ask the question I planned on asking, I would like to make a slight correction to something which was said in the last conversation. Uh -huh. You did say that you uh, may, at no point made any point comment saying that no, nobody was saying believe, uh, that we'd be leaving the single market. But Andrew Adonis actually on his Twitter account did point out a video, which I, I grant, granted it was prior to the referendum campaign, uh -huh. but you, you, uh, you said that nobody is saying we should leave the single market and also references to Norway, which is in the single market, were made as well. So, um, but anyway... No, I've, John, I've always wanted friend. to... Live. John, 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 John. John, I've always wanted to leave the single market. Yeah. Let's but be think, absolutely think, clear about that. Uh, look, 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 whatever people's position... Anyway, that's, that's, not a, that's not the point I was trying and, to and, make. And, and, when, and when it comes to Boris, and when it comes to the others, they may have been supporters of a single market as cabinet ministers, but once the campaign proper kicked in, they were all very clear. Anyway, John, let's move on. Anyway, yeah, uh, what I would like to ask is considering... Um, also, I have a bonus question for Aaron, if he's uh, still there after we finish this part. Um, is, is he still in the room, actually? He's not in the room anymore, no. Okay, well, I can I can ask you. I'll ask you on behalf as well at the end, if that's okay. Um, uh, John, John, sorry, I mean, is this? Are you coming on to interview me? Is that what is that what's happening here, or or, or are you coming to, on to, on to give me a comment about whether you think there was Russian collusion in the Brexit campaign, and if there is, why? Uh, okay, well, I'm trying to engage in conversation. My question actually is, considering oh, right. all, done, all the uh, all the com concerns which many people have, and I think also you you yourself have said that the uh, negotiations are not going well. My question is, why is Brexit still happening? Why are we still leaving the European Union? Because we voted for it. And I thought you were going to say that, and I'm going to point out that's a cyclical argument. What you're saying is we voted to leave, therefore we're leaving. And I was actually asking for what, uh, what is the reason we are leaving. What you're effectively saying is we're leaving... it's undemocratic, leave. it's expensive, it's, it's run by nasty bullies, and actually we're getting out just in time as Eurosceptic partisan groups spring up all over Europe. It is, John, for us, the great escape. Uh, well, uh, it's, I think you would find that in many ways the... Uh, parliament is not democratic because we, you're, cam you're currently campaigning, as are many Conservatives, to not have a parliamentary vote on the final deal. And I Parliament gave indeed. Parliament. John gave the people the decision. The point about a referendum, people, it's people. a different, and the people have decided to leave. It's I, I mean, it couldn't be simpler. Decided, the people have decided. The people have decided to leave in a vote two years ago, which we can debate whether it was binding or not. John, let me two ask you a question because we really are. We really are, and I've got to move on because. Time is short. Do you believe, John, and you're clearly a very ardent Remainer, do you believe that there was Russian collusion with the Leave campaign? I believe that there was enough influence from Russia, whether that be through uh, the botnets on Twitter and Facebook or through influence in uh, European... Uh, sorry, British Parliament and other campaigners, whether there was money transferred or not, whether it was done legally or not, I don't know, but I feel there was enough to make the 1.8% swing from <laughs> Remain to Leave that would have caused the, the, uh, the margin to change. And John, you listened, to you listened to Aaron Banks and Andy Wigmore earlier. Do you believe them? Um, I believe that someone who got expelled for stealing lead from the roof of his school and somebody who doesn't pay taxes and was revealed in the Paradise Papers is not a valid... Doesn't pay taxes? Doesn't. He, well, oh, doesn't he? I tell you what, John, I bet, he's paid, I, bet he, I bet he's paid a few more taxes than you and me. Anyway, there we are. You've made your mind up. I'm going to go to Liz in Notting Hill to ask her. Liz, good evening. Hi, how are you? You're, now, you're American, Liz. So did the Russians collude in the Trump campaign as well? 
I mean, as a young American living in London, I've listened to Nigel talk about this a lot. Um, and what I'm curious to ask you guys about is, you know, my generation grew up on Facebook and I've gotten in a lot of heated debates with people about if Russian collusion um, or any that, you know, that the Russians hacked into my Facebook and influenced my vote and heated argument after heated argument. I'd, I love to hear kind of what Nigel would advise me to reply to my friends. Uh, well, I think we've reached a point, Liz, basically of hysteria. I think that the twin shocks of 2016 of Brexit and Trump all happening within six months of each other um, is something that the establishment um, and those particularly with the financial vested interests just cannot reconcile themselves to. And so they're desperately trying to find a reason that these things happened. One, of course, is that we lied to everybody. Well, that's obvious. Uh, and the other is, ah, it's the Russians. And, and Liz, nobody has produced a shred of evidence to say that the Leave campaign was financially backed by the Russians or that there was significant involvement in the Trump campaign. The whole thing, Liz, is an hysterical witch hunt. And I have to say, it is having some success because it clearly right. is Sorry. worrying some people. Not- Nigel, because it's Carol Kedwalla here from The Guardian. Oh, goodbye. Um, look, listen, I'm not interested in talking to Carol Kedwalla of The Guardian, who's made a whole series of extraordinary claims about me and, of course, <laughs> and, of course, Julian Assange, what I was purely doing that for LBC. I've got time for one last quick caller, uh, Greg from Edinburgh. Uh, good evening, Mr Farage. I was just wanting to uh, congratulate the Russians, really. Uh, on their uh, forward planning and their future, and that they've uh, they've had the EU behaving for years or decades in the way that it has been, so as to make us vote to leave. Uh, uh, in what way? Voted, well, it's obvious that uh, the uh, the the iniquities of the common agricultural policy and the common fisheries policy and. Uh, the, the, the referendum vote in Ireland and France and Holland, mm. that was all made up by the Russians. <laughs> OK, I've got it, I've got it. Right, the Russians have been engineering it for decades, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> it, must have, it must have been. They must have been, because all that was obviously, was obviously all fake. <laughs> Guy, Greg, I love your sense of humour, and we needed a humorous call to finish all of this off, and thank you very much for coming on. Well, 10.30 tomorrow, um, it'll be Banks and Wigmore before this committee it will be really rather exciting i think for everyone to tune in and watch and no doubt there'll be some post-match analysis of that tomorrow evening but equally uh, how trump and kim have got on is going to be the absolute key Uh, and i'll finish by picking out this text hi nigel we wish president trump and kim jong-un all the very best for tomorrow and so say all of us you've been listening to the nigel farrah show here on lbc i'm back tomorrow from seven at 10 tonight it's ian collins but up next it's clive bull nigel thank you very much